Hi, welcome to Lab Module 6 of the Azure Data Factory Hands-On Lab. In this lab module, we'll be loading our Azure SQL Data Warehouse with Azure Data Factory using our outputs from previous lab modules. Let's talk a little bit about our data warehouse structure so that the lab steps have some context. The Azure SQL Data Warehouse deployed in Lab Module 1 creates several dimension tables and a flight fact table. This takes the star schema approach, and each flight in our flight fact table relates to our dimensions by the surrogate key. Our dimensions include the airline of the flight, the plane information gathered from our Hive query, the date of the flight, and the airport of both the origin and destination of the flight. This use of the same dimension for both foreign keys in our fact table is called a role playing dimension. Our load process is going to copy the relevant data that we need from our various sources to a staging schema in our Azure SQL Data Warehouse, and then run some store procedures to update or add records to our dimensions, and then add records to our fact table. We will be gathering data from our Azure SQL Operational Data Store database and flat files in our Azure Storage Container that contain output from previous labs, including weather data and FAA aircraft data. Our stored procedure to load our dimension is updating each column, and in the Kimball approach, this would be called a type 1 update. The logic in the stored procedure could also be written to handle type 0, which are no updates, or type 2, where you would end date the previous record and add a new one based off of certain columns. Our fact table stored procedure performs lookups using left outer joints into our dimension based off a of business key, such as the airport code and then returns a surrogate integer key to store in the fact table. We also take some of our weather data and add that as new columns in our fact table for both the origin and destination airports. Our fact load store procedure also does look at the max existing flight date and only pulls in records from staging that are newer. This is a small first step for an incremental load process. With Azure Data Factory, we could also grab that date and push it further down the process and possibly only transfer newer records throughout our load process. This can also be done on dimensions, but depending on your source can be a little bit more difficult if you don't have a timestamp. In Lab Module 1, part of the deployment script also created a DW user account on our Azure SQL Data Warehouse that has a different resource allocation. It's best practice not to use the admin account of SQL Server to perform Azure SQL Data Warehouse load, and instead create a user specifically with a desired resource class in mind. In our case, we assign it to the large resource class in the deployment script created the user. All right, let's discuss what we'll need to have before we complete this lab module. You'll need to have an active Azure subscription with rights to deploy and use Azure services. You'll need the resources we deployed as part of the lab module one, including our Azure Blob Storage Containers, our Azure SQL Databases, and our Azure SQL Data Warehouse. You'll need the Azure Data Factory we created in Lab Module 1. And ideally, you'll have completed the other lab modules to understand how files have landed in our Azure Blob Storage Container. But if you didn't, we did deploy versions of these files as part of Lab Module 1 to the appropriate locations. Let's talk about the tasks we'll be accomplishing in this lab. First, we are going to create the pipeline for the Azure Data Warehouse loads. We will then start creating a series of copy activities for each table in our staging area. The first set of copy activities are going to grab information from our Azure SQL Operational Data Store database and land them in our Azure SQL Data Warehouse staging schema. This includes our fact table data our airport and airline dimension data. Note that this lab module is written in a way that shows the steps you need to perform for one of these table loads and asks you to repeat those steps for different table names since the process is the same. After we configure our ODS to staging copies, we'll be configuring a series of Azure Blob Storage to staging copy activities. This will gather the flat file information and land that in our staging schema. And this includes our weather data, as well as the FAA aircraft data from our Hive query output. Again, since the process is the same, the lab module will ask you to repeat a series of steps for each text file source. 
After our staging copy activities are complete, we will then call our stored procedure to load our dimension data from staging, and then call our stored procedure to load our fact table data from staging. At the end of this lab module, you should have a good understanding of an Azure SQL Data Warehouse load pattern using Azure Data Factory from both Azure SQL Database sources and Azure Blob Storage text file sources. If you want to peek at the logic in the stored procedures for loading or dimension and fact tables, you can use SQL Server Management Studio and log into your Azure SQL Data Warehouse created in Lab Module 1 and take a look. In our next Lab Module, Module 7, we'll be covering how to use triggers to schedule your Azure Data Factory pipelines. The next couple of Lab Modules deal with scheduling and monitoring our pipelines so we can begin to operationalize the process. Hope to see you in Module 7. Thanks.